All right, guys, welcome to the KFO show, Kayak Fishing Obsessed. My name's Darren. I'm your host. And if you love fishing or kayak fishing, there's no better place to be on the planet than right here, right now. Guys, I got a show for you tonight. We got Paul from Cincy Fish Dudes on, and we're going to be talking about targeting smallmouth bass, some new baits that came out on iCast a couple of weeks ago. We're going to talk about the Titan X. And so this, I am absolutely pumped out of my mind. Paul and I have gone fishing before together when I was down in Cincinnati. So this is going to be a good time tonight. All right, let's do some news and announcements. Uh, if you're listening in from the podcast, one, I'd like to apologize because I was actually traveling on vacation last week. And I listened to one of my recent podcasts and the audio was abysmal. And so I invested into a nice new mic. So hopefully this sounds a little bit better on your ears. And so thank you for sticking in with me for the first 34 episodes. Hopefully it sounds a bit nicer. All right. Well, I got to, I just celebrating this past week. Um, this show is brought to you by Wendell Fishing, which is my YouTube channel and everything else, live show, all that stuff over there. But we just hit 5 million views in 25,000 subs last week. We're already at 26,000. So I just want to celebrate with all of you because I am not the hero in the story you guys are so i get i'm just absolutely jacked to have conversations with all of you a lot of you are hopping on and commenting like i consider you friends and so thank you so much and i'm just pumped about where the channel is heading tonight if uh we have the cast cray giveaway and really what this means is i'm looking and asking people to be a part of the Wendell fishing community by becoming a channel member i have a variety of different levels on my youtube channel like starting at two dollars a month i send out vinyl decals i do um, as you guys can see some people will type in they have their own custom emojis you get access to those uh, early access to videos that won't post for a week sometimes two weeks in advance i just added an additional perk where i every monday morning i share kind of behind the curtain channel analytics so if you're curious about that love for you to have become a channel member head over to wendell fishing dot com which take you to my youtube channel and hit the join button to check that out let's head over to the knucklehead bass fishing series guys i am in the middle of month number three of four uh tammy sanchez greg massa already solidified their spot and we have a fight going for uh the third person to join my team so let's head over to fishing chaos let me present my screen here share the old screen fishing chaos all right, I just like refreshed this a minute ago. So we should, should um, have this figured out. Oh, and I apologize, guys. I am, uh, I didn't realize I had a particular screen up and now it's gone. All right, here we go. All right, Tammy Sanchez, man, she won the first month and she is in first place this month of 98.25 inches. Um, I am pulling in second with 94.75 inches jake that's why you called me today he wasn't in third as of this morning so he caught uh he caught some fish today he is technically first since tammy and myself are already on the team he's in first place with 90.775 inches lost in tackle lit 89 inches and Troyce corrales 83.75 so it is still up for grabs folks and if you didn't get in if you're like hey i want to be a part of that Head over to fishingchaos.com, type in knucklehead, and it'll bring up that tournament. And I'd love for you to join the team and win a spot on the team as we, we are going to be going down to Lake Gunnersville on Veterans Day weekend and fishing off against Hoover, Fluke Master, um, Larry Mountain Jr., fishing with Gramps. And there's like a ton more people that, that who, who just recently, Bearded Dad Fishing recently just joined. And so pretty pumped about that. All right let's head back here let me stop sharing my screen here all right well now next week real quick chad Hoover is going to be as my guest uh on the show as we talk about a reel that kind of broke my facebook page three million views two over two thousand comments and we will react to those as it apparently was controversial so that'll be a fun show next tuesday night and remember this is an interactive show so let's welcome paul from Cincy Fish Dudes. Oh, he's riff. Oh, come, oh, come on. Is that the ukulele I see there? Yeah, I'm going to do your soundtrack, Mr. Wendell. <laughs> it's going to be I called like Mr. It. Wendell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were in the green room. It's like, hey, he asked me, have you ever heard the song Mr. Wendell? It's like, my last name's Wendell. Of course, I've, I grew up on that song. 
I used to know all the lyrics. I also grew up on that song. Uh, 90s it. babies. Yes. How you doing, brother? You know, I'm doing good. It's been a couple months since we since you took me out and put me on the juice. I've been missing. Oh, missing so was that. March or April? I don't know. It was freaking cold. Um, I do remember that. Oh, well, yeah, for you. But yeah, because uh, we went waiting. It was like 51 degrees and you didn't have any waiters or anything. No, you didn't either. You did let me borrow some socks. Yeah, I, and you... I had a wetsuit underneath my pants. So wetsuit pants. So it kind of <laughs> kept me warm. But I didn't want to tell you that because I want you to think I was like, man, manning up there with you. You had two pair of gloves the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right oh what come on lost and tackle please help him with the intro you know you love that he's in there he's dancing on that uh with that music intro music uh we'll get there i made all right well it's fishing mission here recently. i see that matt welcome my man we got steve i got all kinds of people in here that i re recognize sergeant reed awesome awesome darren hayes you spelled your name wrong brother but hey welcome to the show so tell me paul Yes. What is Cincy Fish Dudes? Because I'm only talking to one person, but Cincy, what is Cincy Fish Dudes? You should know because you're a Cincy Fish Dude. Yeah, and I know. Every, I have a pin. On the channel with us is a Cincy Fish Dude. Okay. I mean, as you can tell, we, we never fish with girls. They won't go with us. Ladies, women. So <laughs> it's, we're just stuck with the dudes. We're stuck with the dudes. So how did it all come to be? Um, You know. Me and my buddy Neil, I don't know, it was 2019. I, I, you know, I always fish casually, not like I do like every day now intensely, but uh, I was on the internet too much, like we all are on our phones too much, just trying to find something to get me off and outside. Started hiking a lot, started hiking by bodies of water. I'm like, oh, I'll bring my fishing rod, blah, blah, blah. And then I was catching things. I'm like, well, I'll bring my GoPro next time. And then, um, yeah, it was just the channel was just going to document my catches uh, between Neil and I and where we can go the next year. Like, hey, this was hot in March this week. We should try right. that again this year. But then uh, people started commenting. And so that um, we, I just start making television episodes out of them. So, <laughs> you know what? I've been I've interviewed now. What You're number 35, 35 and, YouTubers. And a lot of them are YouTubers. Not every single one are YouTubers. But the, the story is the same. Like yeah. it was, it, it was never the intention starting out to be like, I'm going to do this full time on day one. It was always yeah. like I tripped and I fell into it and Hey, here I am now. And people, people are listening and commenting. And now I have a community that I never had before. So. Exactly. So. And like, we've talked about this before being a regional channel, it's kind of cool because I actually run into people who watch the show on occasion. Like if it was like a more of a national thing, I probably would never run into anybody, but having Cincy in the name, I'm, you know, running into people at breweries and bars and other places of alcohol, I guess. Um, <laughs> Common denominator here. Stores, which also have alcohol. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. So you're like famous in Cincinnati is what you're trying to say. Yeah playing fast and loose with famous but i have uh, i've had yet anybody to be like hey are you are you darren it probably will never happen but uh who knows oh, we'll on. see I, I i'm not canton fish dude so i don't know we'll see what happens <laughs> love it <laughs> I, I i am wearing your pin on my p pfd though nice. you, you might you actually made mention of that so nice. yeah uh, i'm a little bit of, of a brand whore i'm giving everybody my pins and shirts and buttons and stuff I don't know. It, it's all good i have a marketing background so it's tried hard I, to get that out of me. Since I've been in your house before, I know just to your, your right, my left is like a, a screen printing shirt. Did you make that? Tell me you made that shirt. I did. Yes. I, did. Yes, I love sir. it. So let's hop in here. Uh, everyone came to the show because they want to hear about chasing smallmouth bass. And I know that's something you're fairly good at. Not just smallmouth. So you have your master's master angler certificate from last year. So yes. one, explain what that is for those who don't live in Ohio. And two, what's kind of ease our way, segue us to smallmouth bass fishing. I got some questions for you. And Gramps, welcome to the show, my man. Heck yeah. Hey guys, uh, I had a couple comments that I was a little quiet. I adjusted my levels here. So let me know if you can hear me a little better. Maybe I'll just talk a little closer. Um, what, um, Darren, what was your question? I'm so, uh, so tell me the master angler and then oh, yes. segue for us. So Ohio has Fish Ohio. It's a recognition program run by the ODNR, and they have a list of all the species. And if you 
make the measurement. It doesn't go by weight, it goes by measurement. But if you make the measurement guideline for what they consider a trophy fish, you get a fish angler pin. And, you know, I got a bunch of those every year. Like, But if you get four different species that meet that level, I mean, that meet their Fish Ohio qualifying, you get the anglers, the master's pin, which is the same thing as the, ang the regular pin, but it's gold colored and you get a certificate and stuff like that. I've only, I think I've only done master anger two, two times out of, since I've started doing this thing. So, I mean, these aren't just like, uh, you catch a, I mean, what are the inches on like, what's the, the bass? What's the carp? What's the uh, small yeah. mouth is 18 inches. Okay. That's a chunk. Which, you know, is might be easy for people who live up by Lake Erie and stuff, but down here, I, I got to find that stuff out of like creeks and, and, and stuff, which is, you know, I'll find maybe three or four a year. Yeah. They're, they're not everywhere. They're not everywhere. I usually get the small mouth over the large mouth master anglers, but I always get the a couple like, you know, like a huge rock bass or a huge green sunny or a saw guy. I think last year I got a, a channel catfish. I needed one more to make the master angler. So I was like, okay, I'll, go, I'll just go out for a channel catfish. That, that should right. be easy enough. Should and be. Right away. I caught a and get nailed it. pounder. <laughs> But, I was fishing this morning and there's a gentleman who was fishing next to me and was like, and he caught, he was still in minnows and, and I, I'm fishing a tournament. So I can't, I can't use live bait, but he caught this monster cat and he had a net that maybe was like this big. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go over there with my yak attack net and land it for him. So he didn't like nice. cut his line. Um, so man, so, well, congrats. I haven't, I've never gone through the gone for it but congrats on those who have i mean you got to be you can't just be good at one species so i tip my hat to you my friend when we oh, went out it. you took me to the creeks and you took me to the rivers to the honey holes which i will never share yeah. here's the plates or this is the places where the creek crawler has probably been where matt's fishing mission has probably been um but definitely, i signed an nda definitely matt but we won't tell creek crawler oh yeah where I, I took you come on yeah He's, he's in the, he just showed up for those of the podcast. Like what are you guys talking about? He is in the <laughs> comments as well. Um, also up, been killing it lately on some of his photos he's been posting and he's been trying out the wacky worm. So he's been texting me. He's like, dude, this thing has been absolutely slaying for him. All right. So Can't beat the wacky worm, the wacky worm. So we went out, did we catch an 18? We went out when you took me to the Creek. No, I think we got 16s. Okay. Uh, actually, you you were I was throwing all kinds of goofy stuff, but you were sticking with the the Ned rig, you know, playing night, playing exactly what you needed to do, and, and you were catching all the smallies that day. But it's because you retired the Ned rig like two months early. I, I did go a little. I do. <laughs> well, you retired the crankbait too early. I just caught a I just caught a nice smallmouth on a crankbait. So. Okay, you're right. I do retire. <laughs> I do retire the crankbait. All right. So walk us through. Do you do you prime? I know you, you you just did a video came out. You have a kayak fishing video. But you also do a lot of wade fishing. One, which was your favorite? And two, kind of walk us through your setup, how uh, how you target them, how you find these creeks. I mean, for for those of us, a lot of us who are just like primarily kayak fishing and want to get into creek fishing, like give us the one hundred and one um, okay. from top lures, line, your you your rod it. setup, all that stuff. I'm gonna turn off my AC. So we also got a boat this year as well, and. Um, so that that's just it's so easy. I can't believe how fishing how easy it is when you have a boat. <laughs> like you just stand there and grab from one of twenty rods that are all set up and stuff. So right. That, but um, wading is definitely my love. My first. I mean, I, of, of all over all fishing, I love wading the best. I mean, you are halfway in the creek river most of the time, so you're feeling the bottom with your feet. You're feeling the currents against your knee. You know what's going on. You feel the different temperature levels. You know. So you're getting that kind of thing that you don't necessarily get on top of a boat or a kayak or from the bank. You're just, you're feeling it. You're one with the river. And it's it's just awesome to catch something big when you're half in the river. And you're oh, trying to pull, I hear you. Pull it up to yourself. But, uh, and the adventures and the, you know, the threat of getting shot or chased or bitten by a dog, um, which <laughs> all have happened in the past. But well, uh, hold up, you can't just you can't just say that and then walk I over. I haven't been it. shot at. I've had people play pranks on me, Matt. Um, I've had hillbillies <laughs> chase me through the woods with shotguns. Um, <laughs> you were actual, telling me this story. I've had actual real hillbillies with their handgun handguns and stuff. But um, uh, we use an app. We try to stick it. We know we try to stay on our on the boundaries that we've set out with people. We have permissions through. I, I have other 
contacts and stuff. That's great about having the local fishing channel. So many people send you their spots. Hey, oh. you can use our yard. You can park in, you know, you can cut through our, you can enter yeah. the kayak here. I'm like, oh my gosh. If you're just guys are just going to sit there and give me all your honey holes around town. But, which I try to respect because as a local fishing channel, I'm giving away, I don't want to give away all these spots that we're catching fish. No, so we, I hear you. We, we usually just say it's a, it's a creek, um, a part of the Little Miami River system. We're, we're on northeast Cincinnati. We try not to, I do other little tricks to try to hide spots, but it's not that I don't want people to catch fish at my spots. I just, I would, I'd rather like, you know how it is, show them how to catch fish and why we caught these fish, not just point yeah. to where to go. And... No, I hear you. I uh, I was literally today, I was in Canva doing the background remover because you could literally see where I was in the reflection of my sunglasses, like clear <laughs> as <laughs> day. Yeah. That. And so, I mean, I don't do it to like, hey, I'm, just, you know, I'm trying to keep these to myself. I'm trying to honor those who called it maybe their home lake um, and hopefully keep from getting my tires slashed while I'm out fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Muskie fishermen, which I don't target because they're not in our area, but they they can be uh, very, very predatory or defensive about their, their spots. Oh, yeah. Understand. Oh, yeah. All right. So interesting. Cooler Lid's got a question here. And we'll, we'll talk about the list for, for Ohio, at least, because I know the rules are a little different from state to state. But his question was, are river waterways private or public in Ohio? Give us the lowdown for Ohio. Uh, they're all, I imagine they're all private unless they're running through a park, you know. But one side of the creek could be owned by these this guy, and one can be owned by the other guy, or one guy could own both sides of the creek. Then you're just trespassing. In Ohio, we have this rule like you have to be on the water. They don't own the water. You have to be on a kayak or a flotation thing. But mm -hmm. as soon as you touch foot on one side of the creek or the other, you're trespassing. So you got to make sure you know what side you're allowed on and all that. And so yeah, there, there there are areas that are. I would say fishing friendly where the neighbors come out and wave at you and talk to you and, and he, you know, Hey, you don't care if we come through here and all that. And then, yeah, you're fine. Just pick up after yourself, you know, you right. know, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Now you had some hillbillies roll up with you with some guns one time. I remember you telling me this and yes. you can like, you can talk down anybody. I have you're my like, you, tricks. you my got the skills. Tricks. You're like, I was not here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was fishing in this property, but they lived across the way, but my aunt owned the property. My aunt's boyfriend owned the property across the way. And so usually though, when it comes to people, if you change your mind, start talking about fishing right away, like they'll forget why they're out there chasing you down. Uh -huh. <laughs> more, more than not, just be friendly and kind and polite. Ask permission. And if you, you stray too far, maybe ask permission for the next time. But that's happened to me before. Heck, there's sometimes I'll look for properties, like a, a fishing term. I'll look for properties, look up who owns them, find them on Facebook, message them, get their permission to fish there. Uh, I've, I've, I've gotten wow. a hold of properties through their wives, girlfriends, girlfriends, <laughs> instant message. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a little bit of embellishment. But uh, the things we do to find those good holes out in the way out so so two things here one be friendly but two start a local fishing channel if you really want to find the sweet honey holes because people will start sharing them with you yeah there you go on, cincinnati cincinnati's mine so one of the other cincy fish dudes matt's fishing mission has said paul's a master jedi of talking out of sticky situations so it sounds like you guys have gotten yourself into some over the years yeah yeah matt's too intimidating we just stick him behind me and let let the happy dad talk true hello, hello kind sir you're clean shaven. Yeah. And you got like the vest on. You look like, like, uh, yeah, definitely dad rolling through. I have to, the, the Sasquatch will stand behind me. <laughs> also, in case anything goes down, you have to be able to run faster than the Sasquatch behind you. There you go. There you go. All right. So let's go tactical real fast. You got it. Give me, give me the juice. So, um, what do you, what do you got tied on? Now, you only carry one pole because I've fished with you before. Most of the time, kayak yeah. and boat, I, I, I carry a couple, but. I'm a one rod, one reel dude. What do I have on? Um, I bought this mold a couple years ago because I love three to four inch um, curly tail grubs. Oh, yeah. I've seen amounts. you fish that. Yeah, I call it the Cincy Fish Grub. And guess what? You know, if you melt down all your spent down lures and stuff from the season, you melt down all the colors, 
you get that classic green pumpkin color. So that's probably surprise, why surprise. All these companies have green pumpkin because it's just <laughs> melting all their leftover stuff down. That's or so black. That's what I get whenever I need green pumpkin, I just melt all the colors together. But I, I hand those out. I give them out to all my friends. Um, they're such a great confidence lure. You can fish them fast on the top. You can bring them through the middle of the column where there's movement. You can bounce them like Ned rigs on the bottom. They're just, they're so versatile. They're so versatile. What's and the weight on the jig trailer? here? Um, I like. Right now, I'm like in a, it depends. Small creeks, I like 16 ounces. Bigger rivers, I go, you know, four. 16 ounces? Yeah. What? 116. 116. <laughs> Drag us a weight. Uh. <laughs> and I also make my own like crankbaits. And there's nothing better than catching fish on. There's there's a logo. See, I told you I'm a brand. The, they, they, it's the logo. It's just what's catching them, right? Like, wait a second. That guy's They're famous. Right. I need to meet him. So I need to go swallow this thing. I have a video coming out where I cut. Oh, wow. Well, it's half resin and half <laughs> wood from a branch in my yard. Look at you. Now, if you were to go into Paul's house, like one of his rooms, he's he's got like once they catch one fish, he retires them because they're so pretty. <laughs> yes. It's the greatest feeling in the world to catch a fish on your lure that you spend eight hours making, but it's also the worst thing in the world to lose that lure. But fortunately, I have a video that shows the whole process, so I guess that lure will always be mine in the video. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, I know a lot of people who will make soft plastics, right? Grab the mold, melt it down, do like that. I don't know many people who like tackle what you're trying to do. What are some of the nuances to doing hard baits on your hard own? baits? Well, I've, I started off for years watching like the, I, I like go to sleep to guys watching baits because it's so quiet and like relaxing. ASMR and then, you know, bait making. Year, watching those videos, I knew what I was, as soon as I made my first lure, I knew what I was going to do. Huh. I'm a little bit handy with wood, but, you know, not like most baby boomer men who just know how to do everything wood. So it's just like carving. But I'll, I'll pick a wood from the shop, you know, like a basswood or a balsa, or I'll go out and grab a cool branch from one of my trees, and I'll let it sit around for like six months to dry out or put it in the stove. And then I'll go to a computer and think of a design or, you know, what I want to do. I'll print it out, put it on a piece of wood, carve it. If you look at any of my winter views, that's what I do in the winter or when it's too cold to fish down here in Ohio. I just make hard bait lures. People like watching that stuff in the winter too. Yeah. And most of the time I try to go out and catch something with them, but it's hard, you know, it's hard to do in January and February, but it's happened. It's nice. Happened. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to those. That'll be that'll be fun. We got the comments over here. Ted over here. David Brockway says waiting has changed the fishing for me. And awesome. uh, if you've never been wade fishing before, Man, it's incredible. I'm getting ready to go on a trip out to Pennsylvania next week. Oh, nice. To go nice. smallmouth fishing. It's some, you pick up some giant trout sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, and I am absolutely pumped just walking oh, through awesome, super You're clear water. Too. So we'll see. I might even break out the net. I'm just kidding. Uh, we use a lot of live bait. But I, I'm, I'm bringing the Yamatanuki with me. And they also like to kill the uh, – they, they smash wacky worms with green pumpkin red fleck where we're at as well so that's kind of fun you, you sold me on the yama tanuki i'm gonna buy one uh, I, I i went out this morning i caught five this morning now oh. I, morgan i know he's on he he wrote me and he's like hey i haven't caught a freaking thing on the yama tanuki yet i was like this is what this is how i fish it i fish it in the mornings from eight from oh, i will get on the water around 5 30 till I'm about out. eight o'clock and i just non-stop they will not they just go crazy and something I didn't mention in the video, which I showed how to fish these, is I showed a bunch of techniques, but something I picked up since the video is I'll throw it out. Instead of doing like the tug, tug, tug and getting the erratic movements and let it do the flutter fall, um, I'll, do a, I'll just do a quick reel, 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 burn, 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 pause um, to get it to the boat. And a lot of times, big ones will just, you know, they follow it real fast and then they basically run into it and then they reaction. smash it. And so... It is picked up, you know, Wacky Worm picked me up numbers, but this, the Yamatanuki has been picking up like 13 all the way to 19s for me. Wow. And so it has been, it's actually kind of unbelievable how many fish the Yamatanuki has picked up for me. Are you um, fishing like a Ned Rig too? Uh, I'm not. I kind of moved away from the Ned Rig. Um, my biggest fish recently, and I'm fishing lakes, you know, five, 700, um, 2,500 acres. Yeah, and I've been throwing on a jig and been killing it. I got my biggest fish of the month, twenty one point two five, just a few days ago. Um, 21, I, uh, have that video been released yet? No, it has not. It. No, oh. 
I haven't, I haven't posted a photo of it yet. I'm, I'm so backed up because I was on vacation last week. Um, Is it five point five and a half pounds. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was long. It wasn't that. It was five pounds. Five and pounds. right before that, picked up on the jig a four and a half pounder. Um, all within like an hour. I was like, what is going on? Uh, both on the jig. So between the jig and the Amatanuki, it's been hard for me to pick up another lure. But I have a bunch of new ones rigged up, of course, going river fishing. It's a whole new game. So go a little more tactical for us. You have your um, your grub that you make. Yes. Curly tail grub. You have your hard, hard, you know, homemade. Yeah. I like big anything Joshy you buy. Do you buy anything? Yeah, big. Jo- I like big Joshy swim baits. Um for for a couple of years, I've, I was uh, a pro staff at Cast Cray, so uh, you know you were you were once once as well, yeah. and so I, I fished their lures for you know several years exclusively, but I had since stepped down from the pro staffing world a couple months ago, um, just to you know just to you know go out and fish weird stuff, which I'm I'm really into right now. I'm like oh, that is the strangest looking thing I've ever seen. Let's fish it all night. It looks cool in a picture too, and you got this big purple and pink looking weird thing that looks like a Muppet. <laughs> what are you fishing? <laughs> oh, uh, well, there's. You, I, I'll have to show you. It's hard to. I can't even remember the name of it. Just anything that you you know when you see them like at the fishing shows, you're like, what the heck is that? I've never seen that. And you buy it. Oh, you're the person that. who buys that. I haven't been able to do that for the last couple of years, but now I'm like a free agent. I'm out there fishing with oh, all right. the crazy stuff. But you're exclusive for a while. Now you're like Joshi swim baits. Okay. Also okay. Ohio. Well, nice. So I am what I've had the luck with since we're talking small mouth. Um, so I have, there's like itsy bitsy jugs, but jigs by strike King. And I put a Z man little crawl on it. And that seems to do really well. Of course, just live crayfish just absolutely destroy where I'm heading. Uh, the wacky worm does it in typically shallow water, and then the bomber with the crayfish action, they run on the bottom, and so that usually picks up a larger small mouth for me. But I'm using I'm using fluorocarbon, so I got eight pound fluorocarbon um, okay. for the rivers. Um, you know, just spinning tackle to be completely honest with you. Um, so that's kind of what I run, and but um, and you like natural colors. Uh, typically I'll go natural colors. You, it'll be hard pressed to find any video that I've ever done or any photo, um, outside of like purple that isn't like super, I mean, I guess you can say purple can be natural to some, some bluegill, those kind of variations, but you won't see me doing like neon yellow or something crazy like that. It typically I'm green pumpkin, black fleck for all my Yamatanukis and my, and my Senkos. And then for instance, I just, I picked up some. Cause I was out with, um, true North outdoor adventures. He was, he took me smallmouth fishing in a video I posted uh, a couple months ago mm-hmm. and he, he put me on the Nico leech and then I had a Creek crawler on and he put me on that tadpole thing. So I have, so I have, so ready to go. So I'm going to be, I got a weighted Ned rig. I'm going to tie on that leech. And he's like, the True North Outdoor Adventures. He's like, hey, you know what? I, I literally caught like seventy five fish with one lure because that's a, it's that TPE, uh, real elastic stuff that never breaks off. Oh, yeah. and they last forever. You you will lose your hook more than likely faster than that particular type of plastic will rip off your 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 hook there. So I don't know, man. Creek crawler says know. I'm not throwing anything if I'm not throwing a six inch glide bait in the creek. I have before. But uh, you know, you just maybe challenged me to make my own the six inch glide bait. Those are those are pretty advanced lures to make, but that's I think that's I'm ready for that step. So that might be a fun video. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. So let's talk any well, what is your setup for your rod reel line um, that usually out there? Because I know you, you have like some white. Is it one fishing? What is it? What my my what? I have a custom made rod by Little Miami um, rods. He's like a master rod maker, and I, I met him at a show a couple years ago. We made a, a deal uh, between each other, and uh, I love that. It, I, I beat the crap out of that thing. But he made it for me. He wanted to make a rod that was designed for a guy who does wading, river fishing, and kayak mm-hmm. fishing, um, something that will hold up both and, you know, lend well to each each little thing, both. So, But I usually go braid. 15 to 20 pound. Oh, really? 10 to, 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. 
you know, unless I'm like micro fishing creeks and stuff, then I'll just go out with four pound fluorocarbon. Or, um, but yeah, I, I always go braid to fluorocarbon leader. I, it's just a, I'm a creature habit, and that's what I what I do. It's definitely frustrating at times, but I don't know. Sure, I can chuck it. I can chuck it. Right, and you know, but do you notice the difference between someone fishing? Like, what's what's your buddy's fish with you? What's Matt fish? Is he, you guys all using braid? Uh, no, I think Matt does mono mono mostly on a okay. reel. Neil does braid fluorocarbon leader, and I do mono on my bait casters, and also I have a couple of bait casters with with braid as well. But it depends what I'm throwing with the top water or not, you know. So you're fishing side by side. You guys are using all different types. Yes. Of line. Do you, is there a noticeable difference? I mean, is, is literally our, our best line shy or you're like, I don't notice a freaking thing. I, I, I just don't have enough scientific evidence to have an opinion on that or not. If they're line shy or not, or if I just had terrible cadence on my thing, or I'm just fishing it good, or if it's the lure, if I'm there in the right spot, I don't know. I've, I've used every different color of braid and they all seem to be consistent. Yeah. And even when we were talking about colors before, I've, I've seen studies that, you know, bass can only see red and greens with their rods and cones they have okay um and everything else is just shades of gray so if you're throwing an orange or a purple it just might be a you know an off shade of gray to them this is just what i saw in one study that doesn't mean it you know that's that's how it is but no i think i've heard that i've heard it more in one place is yeah and so i don't i don't know i need to read the study i need to corroborate it um I don't know. It's it's interesting. So maybe neon doesn't matter because it's just a, a real light gray. Who knows? I don't know. Well, it has the green in it, so that might pop. Yeah, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah. So the reds definitely pop to them. I heard any kind huh. of red, red and stuff. Huh. All right. Let me see here. All right. Oh, did we get outdoors for a change? Is a new member that to show up? I thought he was already a member. Well, seven oh three, my man. All right. Creek Crawler. This is what he says. Hey, congrats to Matt and Paul. You guys just surpassed 5,000 subs on your channel. Oh, baby steps. Baby Creek. steps. Oh, in the first thousand, like if you, anybody's out there, like ready to start a channel, the first thousand is brutal. I thought and the then, first hundred was brutal. Oh my gosh. Can somebody please watch the video I spent 10 hours making more than like two people? <laughs> and one of them is me twice. Oh, so, oh my goodness. My early videos were just loud music and uh, fishing terrible setups, doing things way too fast. <laughs> it was a little, little cringy, but no, you know what? I yanked them. They say the, the, the first of the worst. I thought about yanking mine. Hey, you know, it's a part of the part of the journey. It is. Um, I always I, I consider myself not so much a content creator, but a content documenter. And I'm really just documenting what I'm doing along the way. And people I'm pick up on my name. I'm changing my, I'm a content documenter now. Oh, there, there, that what you're doing? Okay, you just did yes. that? It's yes. official, folks. We have a, two content documenters. I've been actually making f videography 20 years before I ever, you know, started getting into fishing. So that was vid making videos. Like I have guitar channels and all kinds of different YouTube channels out there, different stuff. But I love video making as well. So yeah. It, kind of helps doing these you know full length featured since uh video once a week every week of the year so it's, it's a joy it is it is fun and uh because of you i purchased a green screen and this oh, yeah. winter nice. i'm going to be utilizing you get all creative with that bad boy so uh looking forward to using that but you were you were the inspiration behind that nice nice um oh nice okay gramps uh i'm documented the need for a net in my upcoming video just have <laughs> creek crawler wants to let me explain my videography strategy oh yeah Ooh, go ahead no, we're all we all probably change our strategies it's not always the same process but night before charge up the batteries i use a gopro big old battery in my vest whatever i clip it put on my hat or on my vest my gopro is always my number one but if i catch something i'll pull out my phone and get the 4k stuff um, you know, like the close-ups or like the B-roll. And if I'm not feeling ultra lazy, I'll bring along the drone and stuff. But what I do is I just, I loop on my GoPro. So whenever I catch something, I hit the button and it saves the last five minutes. That's called looping. You probably, you're probably familiar with that. I, I've tried it and I hated it. Yeah. But it, it, so when I'm, when I dump all my footage into my computer, um, 
I, every, you know, all my catches are right there, ready to go with five minutes up into it. You, you know, so I can just like, oh, here's the end of the five minutes. There's the catch, and you know, do the editing quick. Then I'll add the transitions and stuff. And at the end, I'll make a couple reels that, if there are anything real worthy, um, I do um, some of the music here in the studio just for fun. I've, um, but I I do it on Final Cut Pro on a MacBook Pro. Um, but you're a Renaissance man. You got all kinds of projects going on. Paul, tilt that mic down. You're still super quiet. There you testing, go. testing, testing. Oh, whoa, oh. yeah. Hey, you're like inside my brain right now. All right. All right. So Thanks, we're gonna we're gonna switch gears here. All right, we're at four we're at 40 minutes. Holy cow. All right. So I was gonna talk about the Titan X, but you know what? I'm gonna switch that. I want to head over to kind of talk some lures because last two weeks ago was the iCast, and they come out, they came out with a ton of new product I lures. Saw. And uh What's that? Let's do some reactions. I want to hear everyone else too. You kind know, of your reactions to some of the new baits out there. I'm kind of pumped about some of them, and uh, so I didn't obviously didn't do all of them. There was a ton of them. But some of the ones that like, huh, you got my attention. All right. So first, let's start out with um, missile baits. They came out with this bad boy. I got photos of all this stuff. All right. It is the Bomba. Look at that. Look at that thing. Right, let me read. Down. Let me read it to you. The Bomba 3.5 is a thick finesse crawl body worm that casts and skips like a rocket. Think a combination of a Ned rig and a Senko. The bait visually looks like a crawfish with no appendages and has a hook slot in the belly for easy hook sets. The 3.5 is mostly fished Texas rigged weightless to erratically fall to the bottom while gliding, rocking, and even going away from you at times. So it sounds like it's just doing whatever it wants whenever it wants. <laughs> it goes <Yeah>. everywhere. <laughs> Almost there, almost there. The bait excels in spitting and casting outfits. I mean, what else are you gonna fish? <laughs> you gonna fish it on? <laughs> uh, it's the marketing department. Oh, I know you like that piece of rubber. And it's basically snag resistant. Ba basically snag resistant. <laughs> Sorry, this is cracking me up. The Bomba 3.5 is available in eight colors, including Candy Crush and Green Pumpkin Diablo 569 for a pack of six. Available this month's month How at missilebaits.com. Three and a half, 3.5. So, okay. interesting enough, so John Cruz owns Missile Baits, who I am fishing against um, his team at Veterans Day weekend. So, I I would really love, I think Chad actually did something this morning where he was like, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we beat John Cruz on his own baits that he created? Um, so, thinking about that. So, what did you think of the Bomba? And, and everyone else out there. A new view. I couldn't really, maybe a top-down view or something would have. You can't see that? Tell what it was. It's a little phallic. I mean, it, it looks like a depth cover scat. I'll be completely honest with you. I mean, uh, it's just... 13 said, can't you just fish a clawless crawl? Yeah. Um, one of the legendary fishermen in Cincinnati always gets crawl lures and cuts the crawls off. There so it is. He likes the shape of them without the crawls. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've seen fish catch. I've seen people catch bass with cigarettes with a hook through a cigarette. So the, yeah. I can't wait to see what else we can throw out here. What else? <laughs> so I like the Bomba. This is why I like it, because I've had a really great success on the depths cover scat. Of okay. course, the Yamatanuki, it's a, it's a similar heavy plastic, um, but this is more so like the depths. If you never fish the depths. Uh, so this this will catch them. I actually saw, I followed John Cruz on uh, his Instagram, and he was down at ICAST, literally catching bass out of the lake next to the convention center with this bait. So... I, I look. I, I look forward to getting my get my hands on him. All right, the next one is the Megalajon. Once again, created by Spro with the help of John Cruz, hence the Megalajon. So let me go and read this through you. Uh, six inch soft plastic swim bait designed for in conjunction with Elite Series John Cruz. Special blend of plastic produces swimming action with durability to last. Armed with a number two Gamakatsu black nickel round bed treble hooks in the belly. Super sharp treble can be held in place with a soft bait magnet screwed into the underside. It doesn't give a price on this bad boy, but also known as also known as the mag draft. <laughs> it just looks, wow. it looks a little <laughs> bit the same same thing. I mean, I like these types of baits, um, but it's literally the mag draft. It just yeah. looks a little bit different. Maybe the fin. I mean, it's an it's enough. It looks a little bit thicker, but I feel like I own this. 
without owning it. Well, it's always cool to see swim baits with a uh, paint it, you know, with paint and designs on it, rather than just like a solid color. You know. Yeah. No, this is good. I like the Michael John. I'll give that a shot. Hey, if you guys haven't done so yet, please help me hit that hit that like button. Help to get some replay action out of the live show. So if you haven't done that, please help me out. Uh, let me see. Ray the Fisherman here. I can't, let me see. Here we go. I'm going to read his comment. Oh, yeah. Before I forgot, I had my first tournament out of the Yak Sunday and came in seventh overall, but won the biggest fish from the skipping technique I learned from you all and Wendell video on it. Right on, man. Nice. I'm telling you, you start skipping lures and you dial that in. It is, it could be a sick, uh, you, you're getting into places other anglers can't rainbow cast in and you can really, you can really pick them up. All right. The next one, uh, let me see if there's any more comments on these. Da, 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 da. I also skip them when, when it's not going under, when, even when it's not going under cover, like when I'm in a river and Creek, I, I usually always try to do a little skip. I don't know. There's something about that. Dun, 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 dun. That reaction. They see it. They see it coming, skipping across yeah. the surface. A little bit of top water there before it dives. No, I love it. I'll, I'll, like you said, I'll fish in open water. I'm just trying to get that, especially if it's glass, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's going to skip really well doing that. All right, what else do we have? <laughs> Fishing with Gramps, the Yamaduki. Yep, that's, about, <laughs> that's, that's what it looks like. Oh, so good. All right, let's move on. This one's interesting. I would fish, I would fish this one. This is the Z-Man. Oh, like a Gobi type? Yeah. Yeah, but the problem that I've had always with these Gobi type lures is that the tail always freaking rips off. I, I literally bought the Bass Pro Shops version and I took it out of the plastic and the tail fell off. So I was like, all right, I need that TPE or whatever, you know, last tech, whatever you, everyone calls it mm -hmm. something different. To have that on a lure like this where it actually will last over and over and over again, that's why I like the Gobius. Let me read this one for you. Matching the soft malleability. <laughs> of a live round goby the three inch gobius composed super soft the last tech uh pre-rigged with a split dorsal fin brush guard and internal bottom hugging jig harness so it's enabled to swim creep deflect off cover with superior snag resistance while also allowing for effortless hook sets available in three eight half and three quarter ounce weights each in eight color patterns six dollars each would you throw this I'll throw a piece of salami if you get to. I say that. I'll, I will throw a big potato. About that. That's what Matt's uh, PB small mouth was on a piece of salami. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, that goby. Um, I have a couple gobies. For some reason, I don't like to throw swim baits with too many fins. Okay. Uh, sometimes they get, a, if the fins aren't perfect, if, you know, if they're shoved in my vest and the, the fins get a little bent and stuff, it just throws off the, the action. I kind of like finless swim baits. Okay. As I'm saying, you know, the dorsal fin and stuff, but that the goby stuff comes with but and also i feel like when if you don't get that hook in there perfectly the fin and the hook can also throw off the tilt of the swim bait this is just personal experience yeah yeah i i, I threw one when i was fishing with you when we went to our pri the private lake and i was like oh sweet i'll break this out i don't fish these too often first throw i got it caught and i couldn't get it out and I oh, really? it line. so I, I never i had maybe two seconds to fish it and the other one the tail fell off and so I've had them over the years, but I'm interested in the Gobius. If I see one of those for six bucks and uh, I might, I may nail that. Kyle Turner, he's like, hey, too fancy for me. I need to master the simple stuff first. Hey, I appreciate that. Low Basics. life angler. The fundamentals. Yeah. The Gobi. Take that bad boy to Lake Erie. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more Gobies up North Ohio than there are down here. So if I was up North, I would definitely be throwing a, a Gobi a lot more. All right. So if you follow the channel at all, I've done some I've done some questions and some polls on the next item. This is the da, 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 the Cast King iReel IFC. Have you seen this yet, Paul? Wow, that's got a lot of technology. Uh, it? Yeah, it's like a check this out. It includes microprocessors that digitally monitor casting variables to offer users a refined digital casting experience. External aerospace aluminum and carbon fiber sensibly protect the internal core computer to keep this reel under seven ounces. It is $350. You pair it with your smartphone and using Bluetooth on the water, you can employ highly accurate motion capture sensor sensors in the spool to really help with your 
casting metrics, including the number of casts made, average distance, yeah. farthest cast, retrieve speed, and more. It sounds like those clubs they sell golfers. <laughs> hey, go home and watch your swing. And Oh, man, I dunk my rod in real into the river at least twice trip. So oh, I yeah. feel like those microcomputers would be singed out by the time I get home. Yeah, yeah. But, but but it's sensibly wrapped in aerospace it's aluminum sensible. and carbon fiber. Did you miss that part? It doesn't sound waterproof. <laughs> It didn't say waterproof. It, it said did? sensibly. Okay. No, it, I don't see waterproof in this at all. I see sensibly wrapped with metal. <laughs> I'm trying to get off the phone when I fish too, not to have uh, another reason to fish and look at my phone. But I'm a tech guy. Don't get me wrong. I I, I love to see. I would love to see the data of casts and all that kind of stuff. That, it would That'd be, be more fun for me on on the boat. I would I wouldn't take that out waiting or anything. But it, it also depends on the price point. Three fifty. Three fifty. Who are you? You independent? I, I don't wealthy? usually spend that money on a baitcaster. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, if it showed up in my, I, 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 I play around with it. But here, here we got some, uh, here we got some comments over here. Da -da -da. Matt's fishing mission said it scans the river for you, and infrared highlights the fish for you. Yeah, right. It's where, where, it, when does it all stop? Right. Steve Brockway, nope, nope, and nope. Kyle Turner, no way. Such an overkill. Low life angler. Next. And, These are uh, all gifts that our wives are going to buy us for Christmas. Yes, so. you're getting the IF, the IFC. Yes, uh, I, I it was probably seventy five percent no, twenty five percent yes when I did the poll on whether or not you would buy this. I'm still trying to scratch my head, like how does this make me a better angler? Like I geek out on the data, right? I can I can understand that. Like does it in real time like adjust to the wind, and so I don't get a backlash? I don't know. Does it I don't have know. Nice action. I mean, it doesn't work well. Yeah, uh, Bucktail. Really Bucktail, yeah. I'll wait for the reviews. We'll see We'll see how this bad boy... Now, they aren't the first one to come out with Bluetooth-enabled reels. I believe there's other That's companies correct. years ago have done this, but the price point was like 800 right? Yeah. And so it obviously never took off because $800 for a reel is kind of it's wild and crazy. And only the big YouTubers that were sent them for free were using them. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it was five thousand subs now. You might be you might be that really big, real big YouTuber. I don't know. Uh Jason Fletcher, kinda overkill, I think. I hear ya. So um cooler lid. He's like, Hey man, I just get the Shimano Corrado. At least Shimano is a reputable company that's known for good reels. Cast King, not so much. Yeah, I heard that I heard that comment a little bit. Kyle Turner's like, Hey, if you give me one, I'd sell it and buy a few SLXs. <laughs> that's what I fish in SLX. <laughs> uh all right, what else do we got here? Oh, I got this. This was kind of interesting. I saw show up. Oh, let me see here. This is the rattlesnaker. I know, right? Like, what in the world is this? All right, so, let me try to figure out what this is. Yeah, right. All right, okay. So, right, see the needle at the front. Yes. And it is it put rattles into soft baits. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Who's it by? Who's it by? Z-Man. All right, so Z-Man. What is this? The so rattlesnaker implants Elastec baits. So those things are hard to get into. Um, with rattle attraction or extra weight, which makes yeah. sense because that TPE plastic floats, right? Yeah. And so this tool allows for insertion of rattles and weights, blah, 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 blah. Um, Built-in storage compartment holds extra glass rattles. So that's what it's doing. It's Who's implanting kids? glass Who's rattles. Kids? All right. And you can get replacement rattle packs and it has a surgical tubing needle guard. So it <laughs> prevents accidental harm. <laughs> okay. Add that to cart. Yeah, there you go. So $4.99 and $12.99 for the tool and a 10 pack of rattles. So okay. what do you think? Would you, I mean, if you're listening in, you're like, Hey man, that sounds, that sounds legit. Would you use it? What does it sound like in the water? Is it loud enough? You know, is it loud enough in a river to even make a difference? It's a tough call. <laughs> Kyle Turner, call. put oh, that so in your Yama Tanuki and smoke it, there baby. You <laughs> there you go. Uh, rattlesnake. I'm game. I've been doing this for years. You know, I like. I like the. I like it. And here's why. I, I like, like Z-Man products. Um, they're kind of annoying to store. Um, they're kind of annoying in a variety of different ways, but they also have the, you know, most things there's, there's pros and cons. And one of those cons is getting that stupid thing to fall 
Um, and so being able to insert some weight. Okay. That that's somewhat interesting. Rattle. All right. Also interesting. So I don't know. Jason Fletcher's like, pop, Hey, net, take put them in the rigs, pop them off the floor, give it a little rattle every time it, you know, it does that little. Yeah. It's just something, something a little different. I don't know. Jason Add Fletcher says, take my money. Add it to cart. It looks like we all agreed on that one. Oh, look, we got positive bucktail right. fishing. That might be something worth giving a whirl, a little rattle to a Senko or a brush hog right on. It definitely looks like some sort of spy thing that, that you put poison into somebody with. Like, yeah, well, you, you took that dark real fast. I don't know where you're going with that, but that was that was pretty dark. The KGB <laughs> weapon. Fishing with Gramps. Glass rattles are good for big worms as well. I know Gramps was picking up some some biggins. He had a uh, what I was listening to his short or something. He's like, hey, I was getting skunked all morning. Broke out my my uh, fish finder and started. I uh, found a, I think he found a 19 on a big worm. So throwing some glass rattles in there. I have no other way to put glass rattles or rattles into my, my bait. So cooler head, cooler lid, thumbs up. Um, Lost and tackle said I would, if I use Z man more than four bags, I'm not sure what that, I'm not following there. They might just like their bags. Oh thumbs. yeah. And then the last one, I got the last one for us. I this, we're, we're changing from lures here. And this is something I just thought was interesting because I use these a lot. Well, I don't use these. Anyways, all right, here we go. It is the Mustad Alpha Point Assault Wide Gap Hooks. Ooh, the hook is a little higher. Yeah, you see that? High, yeah. You see that? All right, I so the high hookup there. ratios and secured hook sets on big fish are standout features for the new hook, the Z-Bend and epoxy at the eye holds. Protect soft plastics, perfect for wide gap hook applications like the Texas and Carolina rigs. Well, also great for flipping. And so, as you guys see there, of course, this must adds alpha point. And so, the alpha point, I think those those points are at a, a, a sharper angle if you like digged into them. So the penetration is going to be a little bit faster there. Four ninety nine um, for a pack of these. I'm not sure how many come in a pack, but for those on the podcast, it's not the typical where the hook lines up with the offset bend. So these are off a little bit. So I don't know. That'd be interesting. I mean, it makes sense logically for me. I just yeah. need to get my hands on some of them. I don't know. Would you throw them? Let me see. I got some comments. Over yeah, there. that's another one I would add to cart. All right. So so a bunch, bunch of no's. About 50-50 there. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's leave some, some comments here. All right. Bucktail fishing. Looks like a Minecraft EWG. Uh, Bass Ackwards 13. Those hooks look legit. I agree there. Uh, Cooler Lid says, it reminds me of the Shear Point hooks. All right. All right. And Matt's, <laughs> Matt's Fishing Mission said, I'd rig the biggest wad of salami you've ever seen on that bad boy. <laughs> Did he tell me that story real quick? So, Matt's, you know, the guy's out in Rivers and Creeks several times a week chasing he catches giant smallmouth all the time but he's still not able to get past his pb smallmouth it was like a decade ago on a piece of salami dangling in the river <laughs> it was that so ridiculous i think it was like nine mile or something right off the ohio river or something but uh that's funny uh all right kyle turner he's like hey i try that he likes resin on the eye i know it makes a nice finish there ray the fisherman could change the action of the plastic, but might be a good thing. True that. Go. Always, if you give a fish a different read than what they're already read a million times yeah. by other fishermen. Oh, this is interesting. So, lost in tackle. If it's considered an offset hook, they are illegal in New Jersey. That is news to me. I did not know that. Huh. Hmm. And uh, interesting. Why. So that's all I got for the the new stuff there. I was gonna run through talk about the titan x but we're coming to the end of our time here if you got a question for <laughs> bass awkward says uh texas rig that baked potato i mean a lot of people have been uh, <laughs> so i love the wacky worm you know i just it just catches fish and not just small fish for me it just has caught significant i mean I weedless take... weedless or regular no i just regular I just, I mean, if i if i'm fishing like a 28 cent yum dinger I yeah. just go straight to the worm. If I'm okay, right to the middle eight, of the worm? Uh, right to the left of the clitellum there. That's okay. that's the money spot for me. Now you I'm fishing a... Nico rig. Yes, I have okay. some of those. So my man, 
um, Nathan, I go fishing with, he has, he's like, oh, I was like, you have any Nico like weights I can stick in his worm. And he had like a pouch. It's like pop, 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 pop. And like every different, <laughs> every he, different one you can think of. I use so, little drywall screws sometimes. Uh, yes. Pan head, yeah. like three, th whatever, 30 second pan head screws. I thought about getting some of that powder coating. Yeah. And, but I was like, oh, it doesn't really matter. I'd just be goofing around at that time. They can't. But yeah, so you can go real cheap, really fast, get a bag of those for pennies on what you'd pay dollars for like a 12 pack of those. Yeah, we're late July, so it's wacky rig season right now. So Yeah. All right. All right. We got some questions here. Yeah, if you got it, we're, we're coming down. We're, we're at the hour. And so if you have a question for myself or got a question for Paul, the one of the OG Cincy Fish Dudes, then go ahead and throw that in there. All right. Kyle. This is yeah, Kyle's got one. Here we go. I'll read it for those on the who's listening to the podcast. What is the first thing I should look for in a river to find smallmouth? Okay, smallmouth like current. If you usually catch a bass and there's not current in my area, it's a lot of times it's going to be a spotted. But if that current's coming through the river, often there's going to be water that's not moving with the current. It's, we call that slack water. And they like to hang out there and ambush, you know, bait fish that are coming through that current. They hang on that. Slack water where they're not fighting current, boom. So I like to look for slack water next to current. And a lot of times in the slack water, you get the whirlpools, the eddies, yeah, yeah. Um, any, any of that kind of like weird reverse motion. Um, also foam, I call it the foam is the home. Yeah. Uh, anytime you see foam on the surface, they use it like, you know, they don't have eyelids. So, you know, they're just trying to get out of the sun a lot. So they'll get underneath foam and stuff. So we call it foam is the home. We toss in there and often more times than not we we nail a fish right out of there and huh. of course structure you know if you got a stream and then there's just one giant rock out there you should throw at it you should throw at it there you go so the seams or you call slack water um i mean we got, so take it all back you got to remember you know what these fish are doing they want to exert the least amount of energy um to attack and so it's typically going to be in that slack water, that that moving water, really close to fast moving water, which they're just sitting there waiting for something to fly by and just go nail it real fast. So, all right. Now, I think it's a great question here from Matt's Fishing Mission. Fellas, you only have three lures to take on a creek. What are they? So, we'll answer it. I want you to answer in the comments as well. If you're going out creek fishing, what are your top three? Go for I'll let you, I'll let you go first. Me? Yeah. Definitely my Cincy Fish Grub or, you know, Gary Yamamoto makes these. Um, and everybody makes a single tail grub because I can use them as a swim bait. I can skip yeah. them across for top water. I can bounce them like Ned Riggs. Um, yes, definitely my number one go to bait. I'll probably always have a Ned Rig. I don't use them a lot um, in the summer and stuff like that. But man, you know, if you want to catch fish with nothing else biting, it's the Ned Rig. And maybe a small, like, in the creek, in a creek, if that was the question, maybe a small yeah. like, little crankbait just to change stuff up. Yeah, spinner. You did a whopper popper. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, whopper poppers are fun. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick three, and he didn't say it had to be artificial, I go crawfish. Let's go live crawfish. It's a blast. Or like one of the helgramites, that type of stuff. I love. I love finding it, and then fishing with it. It's like full circle of life for me. Yeah. Um, and then. The Nico Leech, been yeah, absolutely slaying. Nico, Helgramite, any kind of Helgramite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the Bomber, the Crawdad Bomber, which are harder to find. Uh, I yeah. recently got one. I got two from 13 Fishing. It has metal, has a metal square bill on it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that clicking action. So I got two of them because I'm probably going to lose two of them. But uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that one. So you look like you're, you're like, your mind was blown when I said that. <laughs> I'm also trying to read comments. But oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. And that's cool. Like, that one must have a cool little action on it with that bill. Yeah. All right. So we got a question here from Fishing with Gramps. Uh, the question is, are you going to play in the KBF Summer Smalley Series? So if you're not familiar, um, KBF just put out a smallmouth series. It's like a three-month tournament, if I read that correctly. And it's only like 25 bucks. And so, Gramps, you know what? I'm thinking I may. Now, I can't use live bait, which I use primarily on my trip. And But I there's some of the holes that I fish in Pennsylvania that are artificial only. And so I imagine I would pick some up that way. So for 25 bucks, you know, it'd be fun to see if I could hang 
with some of the other smallmouth fishermen out there. So, you know what? I think you'll see me in there and I'll, I'll have like three and a half days to post fish. And outside of that, unless I go visit Paul down in Cincinnati, uh, probably not going to be catching too many more smallmouth. But Hey, you know, three, three and a half full days of fishing. I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. Bass Ackward's got a question for you, Paul. Paul, I've noticed that a lot of the creeks that I normally catch smallmouth in are not holding smallies. I don't think this summer is unusually hot. What are your thoughts on that? I went creek fishing last night and did moderate. I did okay, you know, five or six in about an hour or so. Um, it's July. I'm there. And I'm, I mean, I don't know if we're doing time of the year or just the whole year for your experience. Um, I think right now. Does, obviously, it does slow down when it gets a little hotter in my experience, but you said it's not this hot this summer, which is true. We were having, in my area, we're having a lot of weird rain where it doesn't rain or it rains too much. And like the creek's too dry or it's too full. So a, a lot of the weirdness that I'm dealing with has to do with like the like rain. Um, but it seems to be consistent, my numbers with years past. I don't, I'm not seeing anything different mm. uh, as far as, as, as in my creeks and personal experience, but I can't speak for yours, obviously, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Jason Fletcher has got a question here. Any lures or ideas for fishing after severe flooding? Interesting question. I like it. Okay. If I, the water is really stained. Yeah. I'm, throw, I'm throwing a spinner and, and doing well in a spinner in, in uh, faster muddy waters. Um, I don't know. Just the colors and the, you know the 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 little what are the, the blades? Um, no, the vibration. That's where you're yeah, going. Yeah, all that. Point. There's just a lot of there's just a lot of turbulence going on. Um, that's what I like. I I didn't really do a lot of spinners in years past, but I'm I'm having fun with it this year. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think it's also I think fifty fifty. Hey, welcome to the show, brother. Uh, has a great so, yeah. a great kind of uh, outlook on this. Some sections of the creek just don't hold good fish, right? Yeah. Keep, keep exploring. So Get away from the sand. Yeah. Might not, that might have nothing to do with you. Just, you know, keep on trudging, trudging through. So, um, Greg Sabrilla says, Hey, maybe add some top water. Absolutely. All right. All right. I'm a sunset fisherman. You're, you're, I feel like you're more of a morning guy. Dan. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. a, I'm a afternoon, late evening guy. So you like the sun up. I like the sun down, but yeah. Um, I got, yeah. Whenever it's like an hour before sunset, top water rest of the night. Hmm. So I don't remember the last time I fished at night. I mean, I'm yeah. up at 5 a.m. and then I got kids, right? Yeah. And so the nights are are devoted to the family. So I don't know. We'll see. Cooler Lids got a question here. They, they keep here. say what? Is Turn that your wife? Like I'm not a family guy. No, you're a family guy. I know you are, but your kids are older. The family. Your your kids are older, right? <laughs> Mine are like seven and five, and like, I don't know. All right. So Cooler Lid says it's 91 day, and then it drops to 70. Yeah. curious how that affects the fish in your opinion paul any thoughts on that from one day to the next any kind, of, any kind of temperature change always makes things a little funky but it could also be in your favor i like the i like the super hot the cold drop um and i don't know creek crawler might know um he, he, he has like a uh, i think he has like a sign a water or i i don't i don't know if creates more oxygen in the water when when mm. there's a cool when they get, when it gets cooler like that um but i don't know i do better when it goes hot to cold and that's when i definitely bring out the top water yeah when you're when it's all of a sudden and cool and it's been so hot yeah they're going to be a little bit less sluggish and ready to pounce and the bait fish are going to be moving around a lot more and everybody's just going to be more alive all jacked up and matt barometric pressure is huge for us Okay. Uh, we're always watching the pressure. Pressure's 29 right now. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so for, for, it's for individuals who don't really pay attention. Like for me. Yes. People have asked me this question before and I've told them it doesn't matter because I can only fish at certain times. It's not like I'm retired and can be like, Oh, I'm not going to go out now because the bear pressure is supposed to be different later today. But for those who are like geek out on this stuff, lay it on us for a newbie. I'm going to do a real sloppy version of this barometric yeah. pressure. Um, you know, when the, when the, when the, the weather's coming, when there's a storm coming, the, the pressure is going to go lower and the fish have the, you know, they have these bladders, air bladders, and they feel this pressure change. They also know with the storm coming, their habitat's about to be blown up. It could be a couple of days before they eat again. It could be rushing mud, you know, for the rest of the weeks. 
So when that when they feel that pressure change, they're like, oh, I need to eat because it could be a while. Mm. Uh, so oftentimes when the pressure's dropping, we're like, let's go, let's go, let's do mm-hmm. this. And yeah, great results with that. Yeah, and it, and it, make, it would make sense to me that it, you know, before when I'm out fishing in lakes and ponds, which is my primary way of fishing, they, their 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 habitat's not gonna be blown up, right? But they do hit for whatever reason. I feel like during the storm and right before the storm, um, the catch rate and my hookup ratio definitely increases. But it would make sense even more for me, being that if a storm's rolling in, especially for river and creek um, fish, that that would be more of a big deal. Yeah. Right. Yes. So it could be days. It literally, they don't they don't know. It could be days. Does uh, moon phases or anything? Do you do you pay attention to those? Or I, like... You know what I, I've done research and stuff on in the past. I thought about doing videos on it, but you know I I personally don't care, and it's hard for me to make a video about something I don't personally don't care about right now. But who knows? Yeah. Maybe in I the think future. I'm, all, I'm always when I post my fishing videos, I like to put what the pressure was and what the moon phase was. But it seems like the moon phase is always something different. It doesn't always seem to be waxing crescent or whatever you know what i i have heard like when there's a full moon the lights are out there's more bugs and stuff out huh. you know and the fish can see bugs on surfaces so they feed up at a full moon so the next day they're not as hungry these are just old stories old men tell me yeah and i believe them no you, you gotta believe it here's here's one thing that is definitely for sure if i have a bad day of fishing i blame it on the moon yeah. And the stars in the sky and the barometric pressure. It's all those things. The yes. stars did not align today. Uh all right, Paul. What what can we look forward to from Cincy Fish Dudes? You got anything new coming down the pike? Um, we took a job boat. We uh did a lot of upgrades. I'm gonna drop that video this week. Built a casting deck on it, put a new motor on it, went out and caught some some nice fish with it, Rocky Fork Lake. Um so I'm going to be doing some like uh, John boat videos throughout the rest of the summer. I like to change it up to a wading video, then a John boat video, then a kayak video. There we go. Small mouth video. Oh, it's hot this week. Let's just go get live bait and go for catfish. I'm, I'm multi-species. I'm not really a right. bass fisherman. I go for whatever bites. Um, carp. Love, love going, picking a day and go finding carp. Why not? Um, but yeah. All right. Well, I look forward to that. Um, what kayak do you have, by the way? I don't think we. This is I just have a, it's, called, it's a Hoodoo pedal power kayak. It's okay. out of Texas. Um, and I also up, I love upgrading things, but I, I put I take the pedal out on occasion and put in the right in the middle there. I, I built this thing so that it holds a trolling motor, and uh, yeah, I have found that going on the John boat is a lot less physically demanding than <laughs> grabbing a kayaking, like. <laughs> You would just back it in the water and get on it, and then I don't know. It's so easy. I, I, my feet aren't aching, you know, until four o'clock in the morning because I walk seven hours on the river. True. And uh, I, I'm not like sore because I I try to lift the sixty pound or whatever kayak on my on my car or whatever. But yes. What is it about wade fishing that my lower back is killing me? Like after a couple hours, I mean, it's just. Ooh. I, I noticed when you threw your back out, when you reached down to grab that smallmouth. We don't have to, why are we talking about that? Okay. <laughs> the smallmouth is so large, I threw my back that's, out. That's what you're trying to exactly. say, right? Well, you reached, you <laughs> bent down so many times to pull. You know what does it to me is my bag. Oh. If That's why I went to the vest and just threw a couple lures in there. Yeah. My back, the, even a sling, it just starts pinching one yeah. shoulder, so I can't do that anymore. I did the backpack and just, I guess I was carrying more things and like, yeah, it, it's, it's the weight of my backpack that does it to me. And I'm surprised like sitting in a kayak doesn't affect your back at all. No, not at all. Good posture in a kayak. And stuff. I don't know. I like, I'm like, as Gramps always says, like the kayak, man, I'm like just relaxed at a back angle. It's, yeah. it's nice. It's just something, you know, in years past, I had like a sling and I carried my fish on the stringer and it was all kinds of pinching so i yes so after fishing with you i saw your vest and i was like hey send me all the affiliate links to everything you have the clip the the vest and i bought all of it oh you did i did i bought all of it so uh you got a kickback for that so glad you did because you put me on the juice i mean i got i got it all so i got the bass dash i think that's what it's called heck yeah and i love it i've taken it out with my girls and um we've gone fishing before and so 
that is a sweet rig. You even taught me like the earwax thing to kind of plug your GoPro. Oh, so yeah, if GoPro you go in, safe. so you don't don't fry your circuitry there. But woo, my man. Yeah, I'm 48 years old, so these river currents knock me underneath the water at least once a trip anymore. I'm just oh, trying to get. <laughs> so no, that's no, this safe. is good. Paul, thank you so much. Thank we you. are at 115. And if you have not done yet, done so yet, head over to Cincy Fish Dudes and uh man, you'll learn a few things. Uh and so I I I've been appreciative of you putting me on the juice, put me on the small mouth, put me on the large mouth. Um, so you're a fishing brother. Thank you I so much for that. Up to Canton. Yeah, come on up. We got some good Absolutely. fishing holes up here. I know, I know. Yeah. I've seen your videos. You, you prove it. Yeah, it's um Anytime you're up my way, anytime anybody's up near Canton, Ohio, also known as the Caribbean of the Midwest, reach out to me. If we can't go fishing, we'll at least do dinner or get some food or brick bread together. So Heck yeah. it would no, be... I wanted to know, even though my channel is Cincinnati based, it's I'm not, you know, if anybody I, I have Canada watchers, people from Mexico watch, it doesn't you don't even need to live in Cincinnati. It's it's yeah. just like any other fishing channel, multi species. And plus we go to Florida. We've been in the Dominican Republic. We went. Up, we go up to Lake St. Clair. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to travel a couple times a year and do different spots and things like that. So it's not just Cincinnati fishing. But if you are a Midwestern fish, fish fisherman, it encapsulates Midwest fishing. Oh, yeah, I for try. sure. I try. I love it. Well, everyone, thank you so much. It's been a blast tonight. I had a blast. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everyone else who's shown up. For those on the podcast, you guys freaking rock as well. I always tell those on the podcast, reach out to me through Instagram, YouTube. I'd love to hear from you. Next week, we got Chad Hoover on. We're going to be talking about kind of kayak fishing etiquette. And really, <laughs> we're going to get all riled up because I haven't Ooh. read I haven't read these 2,000 comments. But I know they, they got ludicrous real fast. So we're going to be talking about that. So I'll see you guys next Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks, Darren. Yep.